In this video, we'll start to build out our order processing system for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com. And up until now, we've got our shopping cart system pretty much built out. A user can add items to the cart. Now we want to start to build out the system that allows them to check out, create an order, and then pay for their order. So in this video, we're going to build out the order models. And we're going to need two separate models for this, an overall order model and then an order item model. And the order item model model will have the things in the order and it will connect to the overall order model and those two will sync up and that's how we'll keep track of orders. So that's what we're going to build out in this video. So let's head over to our code I'm using the sublime text editor and the get batch terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So like I said, we need to add two new models to our app here. So let's head over to payment and go to our models.py file. So this is an order. So we're going to need to access our product model from back at the beginning of this course in our store app down here. So we're going to need to import that. But before we do that, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership with all my courses, videos and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right. So like I said, we need to import our product model from our original models.py file, which is this guy right here. It just has the name of the products, the price, the category, the description, right, sale price, and all that good stuff. So let's head back to our payment models and let's import that. Let's go from store.models. We want to import product. And that's store.models because it's a store directory. Store.models because it's the models.py file. That looks good. Now let's come down here and create some new models. So let's create order model. And we also want to create order items model. And the order will be the overall order, right? You place an order. That order can have lots of things in it. If you've got six items in your shopping cart, those are all going to be order items. So we're going to keep track of them in two different models. And we'll see why that's important sort of later on. But it's just a good way to keep track of these different things. And like I said, you can have one of these and five of those. And so we need to be able to sort of keep track of individual items, how many they are, what their price is, so we can add up everything. It's just a better idea to have it into two models. And that's what we're going to do. So let's create our order model. So let's go class and we'll call this order. And this is going to inherit models.model. Now inside of here, we're going to need a foreign key. And actually, we probably only need one. In the order items model, we're going to need several foreign keys because we're going to need to link a bunch of things up. The, the order, the user, the products, all that good stuff. But in the actual order, we just need one foreign key and that's going to be our user, right? So do we have a user somewhere else? Yeah, let's just come up here and copy this guy. Down here. Paste that in. So our user is going to be a models.foreign key. We want to access the user and we've already imported the user up here in a couple of videos ago. So we've already got that. And then on delete, we want to delete all of the orders. So if a user deletes their account, we automatically delete any orders they had. That sort of makes sense. And null equals true and blank equals true because remember, we can sign in, we can have a user logged into the system who creates an order, but we also probably want to set up a system where a guest can check out. So they don't necessarily have to have a user. So we'll have null equals true and blank equals true. So, okay, that looks good. Now inside of here, we're going to need some more fields. And this is not going to make a whole lot of sense right away because we've already got all of these fields. We've already got the name, the email, the address, the shipping stuff, the billing stuff. We've already got all that, but we're going to duplicate it here. And you'll see why in just a, a little bit here. Uh, so let's go. We want a full underscore name and that's going to be a models dot car field. And let's give this a max underscore length of like, I don't know, 250 or so. We also want an email address. And again, we've already got an email, but you'll see why this is important in a second. We're going to link the shipping model to this later on and, and pre-populate these things with our shipping information that the user has already saved. So uh, that's why we're going to do that. So this is going to be a models dot email field. And again, let's give this a max underscore length of like 250, something like that. We also want a shipping underscore address. And this is going to be a models dot text field. And let's give this a max underscore length of like, 
I don't know, 15,000 or something, right? So a text field is a box, right? It's not a little, like a, you know, it's not like a field for an input form. It's an entire box. And what we're going to do is later on, we're going to take all of this stuff, their address one, address two, city, state, zip code, and country, and put them all in this one box. So it'd be sort of like a shipping label that can just be printed out. It's kind of nice. And that's why we're going to do that. Uh, so max length, it's going to be big because it's going to have to have all of the characters for their address one, address two, city, state, zip code, country, all that stuff. So make the max length here for this big. Uh, we also want the amount underscore paid, right? And this is going to equal the total amount of their order. So if they have five books and each of those books is $5, the amount paid would be 25, right? And we'll do some math later on with a shopping cart to get that. We've already done that in the past, but we'll pull that in here and use that here later on. But it'll be nice to have it in one, one area here that we can look at. So this is going to be a models dot, let's see, what do we want? Probably a decimal field. And inside of this, we want to give this a max digits of, I don't know, what, like 10 or something, five. So like the, the total amount, so 25, uh, 25, 25, 26, right? So this would be one, two, four digits, right? So five is probably not enough. Six, that would be one, two. So let's say 125, this would be one, two, three, four, five. So uh, 12, so this would be in the thousands. I don't know, let's just put it at 10. What is that, like a billion dollars? We're gonna allow people to place a billion dollar orders, or I don't know. Seven, let's say, let's put it at seven, whatever. And then we also wanna give this a decimal underscore places of two. So, you know, like 1999, these two digits, the cents, we only want to allow that to go out to two decimal places. All right, amount paid, that looks good. And finally, we want the date underscore ordered. I always want to keep track of the date that these things were created. So models dot date time field. And let's go auto underscore now underscore add and set that equal to true. And this will just automatically add the current uh, date into the order. So, okay, that looks good. Now, as always, we want to give a little underscore underscore string underscore underscore thing pass in self, and this is for the admin section, just so we can see these orders in the admin area if we want. And so let's return, let's create a little F string here. And let's say, I don't know, the order, and then let's just create a, a random number, str of our self.id. So, okay, just a way to differentiate these things. That should work. So that's our order model. Now we also need an order items model. So let's go class order item. And this is going to inherit models dot model as usual here. And here we need a bunch of foreign keys. So I'm going to copy the user because it's a nice example for us. So I'm just going to do three of these guys. So the first one we want uh, the order. We want to reference this order we just created. So that's going to be models foreign key, but we want to pass in the order. Now on delete, we want to cascade. Yes. And then null equals true. We'll take out the blank. This obviously wouldn't be blank, but okay. That looks good. Now we also want the products. So what products are being purchased in this order, right? So product that would be models foreign key. And then we want here our product model. That remember we imported up here at the beginning of this thing, which is again, this product model that has the name, the price category, all that good stuff. And you're going to see how these things all link together in just a second as when, after we finish this and look at it from the admin area. And it hopefully will make more sense when you kind of look at that, that way, uh, again, on delete, you know, if we delete one of our products, we want any orders that it appears in to be deleted as well. So on delete, we want to cascade. And again, let's go null equals true. And we don't need a blank here for this. Uh, but for the user, we'll just leave that as is. The user, uh, we've got the user model on cascade. On delete, we want to cascade. And null, true, blank, true. Okay, so we've got our foreign keys. Now, what actual items do we want in the order item? Well, 
we need to make sure we know what the quantity is. So let's go quantity. And it's going to be models dot and let's use positive big integer field here. And this just allows us to use a, a big integer in case there's lots of them, right? Uh, let's go default. We'll set that equal to one. We'll be able to change this, obviously, but by default, there's got to be at least one of them, right? So if they're ordering something, there has to be at least one. So we'll set the default to one. And we also want to keep track of the price here. So let's go price. And this is going to be a models dot. Let's go decimal field. And here, let's go again, max underscore digits. Set that equal to 10 or what? We said seven up there. <laughs> let's go seven. Uh, and then decimal places. We'll set that again equal to two. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's see. We also, as always, want to define our underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore. We want to pass in self. And again, let's return a little F string here that says um, order item. And again, let's do a string of just self.id. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, this is definitely major stuff we've changed here. So we need to make some migrations and push them into the database. So let's head over to our terminal and break out if our server's running here. I'm in my C slash ecom slash ecom directory. My virtual environment is turned on. And let's go Python manage.py make migrations. And it's always plural, but this time we actually do have two migrations. We've got two models, right? <laughs> so, all right. And now let's push that migration into the database. So Python manage.py migrate. Okay, so let's also run our server again. Now we also need to add those changes to our admin area in our uh, Django backend. So inside of our, let's see, payments folder, let's go to the admin.py file. There it is. And we need two more of these things. And up here from our models, we need to import those two new models we just created. So that was order and order item. And here we want to add them. So let's go order and order item. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, head over to the website, and let's check out the admin section here. And we have now these order items and orders. Um, not really sure if I like that. This one should go first, but uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. All right, so here we can look at orders. We don't have any orders, let's add one real quick. So here we can select who is this for? Let's say admin and, you know, John Elder, whatever, John at codemy.com, uh, 12 West Elm, Chicago, Illinois, or maybe we want to do it like this. I don't know, 60610. And the amount paid, we paid, say, $42.99. So if we save this, we've now got this order one. We can see there it is. Now we can also go to our order items and we don't have any order items. So here we can say, oh, this is an item in order one. What product? Well, the Python programming book, uh, who ordered it or admin. Notice that's not necessarily needed if it's a guest checkout, right? How many were there? Uh, let's say two of them. And these are $19.99 each. All right. And we're doing all this manually. We're going to build out probably in the next video. This will all pre-populate based on the shopping cart of the user and their shipping addresses and all their things. So we'll connect all this stuff in a second. Right now we're just building out the functionality so that we can do that. So now we save this and we have an order. Nothing has really changed here, but if we go to order items, we see this is the order. It's a part of order one. Okay. And uh, we've got all the information. Okay. So we are moving right along. And again, this may not make perfect sense in this video, but as we connect it to all of our other stuff and sort of put it together in the next video, this will make perfect sense and you go, oh, okay, that's why we do that. But for now, it's kind of hard to see, like just visualize any order will have items in it. These items will be created based on what's in our shopping cart. We'll do that in a second in the next video and uh, it'll all come together. Now, obviously we still need to set up a, a payment processor system. We'll get into that in the next few videos, obviously you know, probably use Stripe or PayPal or maybe both. I don't know. I haven't decided. <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. But for now, we're building out this order system. We're most of the way done with it. And it's coming right along. 
So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Doing over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.